Hi everyone and welcome back to another DaVinci Resolve video. Today we're going to talk about a couple of the most commonly used nodes inside of Fusion. That is the Merge node and the Transform node. These are literally going to be the ones you use the most often when creating compositions inside of DaVinci Resolve. So I figured I'd dedicate a video specifically to explaining how they work. So here we have a very, very simple title. There's no animations or anything. And I've created it because it's the simplest way I know how to explain how they all work. So let's jump across into Fusion and have a look. So with our media out node displayed in the viewer, that's how we have everything. It starts with a background node. Then we have different levels of text, one on the top, one on the bottom. And then we have our line in the middle all merged together and exported at the end. So let's create this effect so that you can understand how it all works. So we're gonna zoom out, gonna delete all the nodes and start from scratch. So generally when creating titles, I find you generally really only need to have the one viewer open. You can have two if you want, but I find one works well enough. So to start off with, we're going to drag a background node in just so we have a base to start creating on. And we're gonna just drag that straight across to the media out node. And there we have our background. Next, we want to add our text. So to keep it nice and easy, what we're gonna do is shift space, type in our text, grab our text plus, hit enter. And what we're going to do is we're gonna call this our main title. And what we'll do as well is we'll rename this node just so we can keep track of it as well. And we'll just recall it main. And then to put this on top of the background, all we need to do is drag the output of that text node to the output of the background node. And that will automatically create the merge node. The way this works is the green is the foreground and the yellow is the background. So the background, which is that black solid, is the background of that merge node. And on that merge node, the foreground is the main text font going into the green and then blue is for masks, and then the white square is outputting to the media out node. So let's create our next level of text. So we're gonna, with nothing selected, shift space, and create another text plus node. We're gonna put this one down the bottom just for simplicity's sake. We're gonna call this one subtitle, and let's just change it to light, just so that there is some sort of difference. And what we're gonna do now is drag the output of this onto the output of the merge one node. And you're gonna see it creates another merge. And that's because one merge node can only have the three inputs and one output. So obviously the background, foreground, the mask, and then its output. So if we're gonna to try to drag this again onto the merge, it will have to create a, another one. And now you can see we have like a little bit of a hot mess at the top here. So with the text node here, let's quickly rename it to sub and we're just going to quickly grab this handle and move it down a little bit so now let's create the line and so to do that again nothing selected we're going to hit shift space and create a background this is going to dictate the color of the line so we're going to change that to let's just change it to like a light blue and let's drag this again let's just put it up here for simplicity's sake so let's grab the output of that background and add it to the output in the merge. It's gonna create another merge. And hopefully you understand that say, let's just drag another text node. If I was to drag that on top, again, it's gonna merge it on top and it works in the hierarchy. So because this is merged on top, if I grab this text node and I'd say, hello world, it is sitting on top of this background because the background is in the merge three and the merge three is the background of the merge four and this text layer that we just created is the foreground of the merge for. Hopefully that's not too complicated. I think that's the easiest way to sort of explain it. So let's delete those because we don't need them. And let's create a mask for this background node. Now, as you can see, the background only has an option for a mask, nothing for the foreground. So with it selected, we can literally just shift space, type in rectangle and add it. And it's gonna add it to the mask. And now you can see it has created this rectangle and with it selected, the rectangle selected, we can change the properties so we can make it a bit wider, drop the height right down. And then we can, with these handles here, move it into place. And you can see here, it, we have created the same effect. So the way this sort of hierarchy works is this rectangle node, which is basically a mask, dictates the shape of the background node because it's plugged into the mask. If I was to change this to an ellipse tool, so if I was to delete that 
add the ellipse, so circle, and plug it into the mask, then we get a circle. The background node controls the color. So at any point we can change whatever color we want. Maybe we want to make it orange. That's how that works. But what if we wanted to control the position of this bar as the bar? Well, right now we can't because the rectangle is its own shape and the background is its own object. So what we want to do is after the background node. So we can have it selected. We want to hit shift space and type in transform. And now we have a transform node and this is going to allow us move it as if it was its own independent object. Now, if we had this after the rectangle node, it would work a little bit differently. In fact, if I have it selected, shift space, it won't work at all because now the rectangle is plugging into the mask of the transform node, not the background. And so there is no information being delivered into that background. Again, hopefully that kind of makes sense. So to move it as a whole shape, you always place the transform node at the end of the hierarchy you want to control. So let's take it a step further. What if you wanted to not only have this orange line here, what if you wanted to have one down the bottom as well? Pretty easy. You can have the background selected, shift space. Now we're gonna type in rectangle again, and it's going to create a, another one. And you can see now we have one rectangle node plugged into the mask of one and into the other, all into this background node. And so I can grab this rectangle, the big one we just made, and I can move it. Let's just quickly make a really small shape just so we don't, there we go. So I can move it at the top here. And now we have two shapes controlling the background and I could add another one and another one as long as it they all plug into the mask of this background node you're going to have multiple shapes and because the transform node is at the end of this hierarchy it now creates this one shape that we can move around so to put that into further action if I was to place here and go with the merge three and put shift space add a transform node so we're going to put a transform node at the very end this very end of the hierarchy. So it's the last node in the tree. Now with this one selected, if I grab the handles here, you can see it moves the whole frame that we have created. And that is because this transform node will affect everything plugged into the background of this transform. So let's just say I didn't want to control these sort of rectangle shapes that we've created, but I wanted to control all of the text as a separate layer. Hopefully you would understand that we would place the transform node here because our text is there. So if I place a transform node here, it will affect everything behind it. So let's do that. Merge two selected, shift space, type in transform. And now with this node selected, now if I move it around, it's gonna control the text and obviously the background because that's plugged into the first merge anyway. But there you go. So now we have this one that we can move. And then if I grab this one, it's going to move everything. And then if I grab this transform, then it's gonna move the shapes and they're all merged together. So hopefully if you understand, so if I wanted to say create another bit of text, so let's grab a text plus, we're gonna type in and we're gonna make it red. So if we wanted to put this on top, all we would have to do is drag it anywhere onto the output of a merge. So say we wanted to have it transform separately to the first two. So we're gonna plug it into this merge three, plug it in it will create the merge for node, which will automatically connect into the transform node. All right, and then everything else afterwards. So now we have the subscribe button, we can move it here separately and everything works. Now, this is a bit of a weird case scenario, but hopefully this is a better understanding of how the merge nodes work. Basically, they're just gonna continuously create and create and create. Basically, if you wanna build effects and you need individual elements, so obviously we've got one, two, three, four, five elements plus the background six. Every time you create a merge to bring them all together, it's going to create that merge node. And every time you add a separate element, even if it's just a picture, let's say we just wanna bring in another color, like a background, to bring it into the hierarchy, we just need to drag the output of that node, whether that's an image, background text, whatever, into the output of the last node or if we want it further in earlier in the hierarchy, we can drag it into, we can drag the output into this merge node. It doesn't really matter where you put it in the hierarchy. As long as you drag the output of what you're creating into the output of that merge. 
and you can create massive effects. So if we were to say, chuck this in the viewer, let's create an ellipse. And then with this one selected, we're gonna move it across. And then we're gonna create another ellipse. So we're just gonna chuck that on. And then we're going to move that one across. And then with this background node selected, we're gonna chuck it into the merge one here. We don't see anything because we need to display the media out, chuck that in too. And so now we have these red shapes here that are treated as the background of the subtitle because that's the one that's in front of it. So it's the foreground element, but it's covering the main title that we created because it's plugged into the foreground of that merge node. So it's the now, it is now the foreground of that main. I think it's getting a bit complicated. <laughs> but again, to transform this, shift space, transform, and now we have our transform and that's gonna transform everything below it. Now we can create this like love heart kind of option there. Anyway, that is just sort of a look at how the merge and transform nodes work. I mean, I'm hoping this helps a little bit. Uh, once you understand how these work, everything else gets a little bit easier. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. See ya.